In lesson three, we're going to look at arithmetic series. The sum of the terms of a sequence is called a series. You can see in our example the series 3 plus 6 plus 9 plus 12 plus 15 corresponds to the sequence 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. The difference between the sequence and the series is the sequence is the list with commas and the series is the sum of those terms. If we add the sum of the series, we're going to get 45. An infinite series has infinitely many terms, and we can denote that infinite series, let's say 2 plus 5 plus 8 plus 11 plus 14 plus the next term and the next term and the next term. We can do that with the ellipsis, the three dots. Any series whose terms form an arithmetic sequence is known as an arithmetic series. And in our example, you can see 1 plus 5 plus 9 plus 13 plus 17 plus 21 is an arithmetic series, and it has six terms. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 terms. We use summation notation. Summation notation is the compact method to write the sum of the terms of the sequence, and we denote it with the Greek letter sigma, that looks like the funny E, and A sub K, and we start K equals 1 to N, where K is the summation of notation. So in our example to the right here, we're looking at summation, this means to sum, starting with N equals 1 and stopping at 5, we're going to follow the A sub K pattern or the sequence 3N minus 2. So substituting N equals 1, 3 times 1 minus 2 is 1. When N is 2, 3 times 2 minus 2 is 4. And then so on and so forth. So we're adding 3 each time. And if we go to the fifth term, we get 1, 4, 7, 10, 13. And when we sum up that series, our sum of the series is 35. So to make a notation of what we just did, in summation notation, the least and greatest integer values of the index n are called the limits. So in our example over here, this is the lower limit, where n equals 1, the lower limit. And then 5 is our upper limit. That's where we stop. So in our example, the limits are 1 and 5. Here at the bottom, you can see the sum of an arithmetic sequence formula. When the first and the last terms are known, we're going to use this formula. And when a sub n is not known, then we'll use this formula. So let's do this with a little practice. The Greek letter sigma is used to indicate the sum. So if we have the sum as n goes from 2 to 6 of n squared, you can see this piece is our explicit rule. n equals 2 is our lower limit, so that's where we're going to start with our explicit rule. And 6 is our upper limit, so that's where we would stop with our rule. And that big Greek letter, sigma, tells us what to do. That's the operation to add or to sum. We want to add up all the terms or to sum up the series. So in our example with this particular one, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25, and 6 squared is 36. And when we sum up all those terms, I believe our sum of the series is going to be 90. This is called an arithmetic series. 
in example one, we want to find the sum of the first hundred natural numbers. And our formula, we know that the first number would be one, and our last number, the nth term or the hundredth term, would be 100. And the formula at the bottom of the previous page said that we are going to do the a sub n number divided by 2. So we're going to take n divided by 2 and add up the first term and the last term. So we want to do s sub 100. So we're summing the first 100 terms. There are 100 numbers. We're going to take half of that. And the first term is 1. The last term is 100. So our solution is going to be 50 times 101. The first 100 natural numbers sum to 5,050. For example 2, we want to find the sum of the first 15 terms of the arithmetic series 2, 5, 8, 11, 14, and 17. And I've pre-written here, when we don't know that a sub n rule, we can use the second formula that was on our first page of notes. We do know the first term is 2, and we know that the difference is adding 3, and the nth term is the 15th term. So we want to find the 15th term using 15 over 2 and 2 times the first term, so that's 2, plus 15 minus 1 times our difference, which was 3. So the 15 terms summed up would be 15 over 2, and we're going to multiply 4 plus 14 times 3, and 14 times 3 is 42, and 42 plus 4 is 46, and then we want to do 7 and a half times 46, so let's think about that this way. If we say 2 divides 46 23 times, then 15 times 23, you can do that with your calculator, 15 times 23, is the sum of the first 15 terms in the arithmetic series. That's 345, the sum of the arithmetic series. Example 3 wants us to find the sum of the finite arithmetic series. And we don't know how many terms there are. We know that it goes up to 99, starts at 4. So we've got to figure out how many terms before we can use any of our formulas, and we know that the rule is a sub n, and it looks like the difference is adding 5, so 5n, and that would be 5n minus 1. So our last term is 99, and 5 times I don't know how many terms minus 1, so 100 is 5n, that means there are 20 terms. So this is the number of terms. And you know what I did here? I took 4 minus 5, which is our difference. I'm adding 5, adding 5. So if I subtract 5, this is my c value from our last lesson, and that's how I got that minus 1 there. Okay, so now to add up the sum of the series, we want the sum of the first 20 terms, so it's 20 divided by 2, and we're going to add up 4, the first term, and 99, the last term, that's 103, 20 times 103 divided by 2 is going to be 10, so 20 divided by 2 gives us 10, 10 times 103 tells us that the sum of the first 20 terms in the series is 1,030. Getting ahead of myself. 1, 0, 3, 0, the sum of the first 20 terms. For example 4, we want to find the sum of the series of the rule 4k plus 5, 
and we're starting at 1 and we're going to 13. So we know, first of all, that n is 13 and we know that, um, secondly, we know that a sub 1 is 4 times 1 plus 5. So our first term is 9. And the third thing we know is that the last term, the 13th term, is 4 times 13 plus 5. So our last term is 57. And that way we won't have to write out 13 different sums. We can jump over to the formula. The sum of the 13 terms in our series is 13 divided by 2 times the sum of the first term and the last term, which is 66. And 2 divides 66 evenly. So with our calculator, 13 times 33 will be the sum of the 13 terms in our series which is 429. So this is relatively easy stuff using the formula property. In example five, we've got two examples where we want to write sigma notation. So this is our n equals one. And two, three, four, five, we got n equals five. So we got five terms. So we're, our sequence is 3, 6, 9, 12. The sequence corresponds to the series 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. So that tells us what our rule is. The explicit rule is 3 times n. So adding up n equals 1 to 5 of the rule, a sub n rule, 3 times n. Here's our sigma notation. For part B, it's a little more complicated because you've got to rewrite what's going on in the denominator. So if n is our, like this is my n value here. This is my n value. And if we continue on that way, n plus 1. So not only is this numerator n, but so is this first term. This is our second n. This is our second term. This is our third n, and that is also our n value. So when you think that process through, the general nth term is n over n plus 1. And then we need to know um, how many terms in all. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 terms. We have 6 terms. And we're adding up, let's see, what's our pattern? n divided by n plus 1. And we're starting at 1, and we're going up to the sixth term. So this is our sigma notation for that series. Example 6 says if an arithmetic series has the first term is 2, the difference is 5, and the number of terms is 20. Write the summation notation for the series. So we know our lower limit is 2. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Our lower limit is 1. And our upper limit is 20, because they've given us the first 20 terms. And our explicit rule is going to be 5 times n. Let's see, if 2 is the first term and we take off 5 from that, then that's going to be negative 3. So 5 times n minus 3 is our explicit rule. And the summation notation starts at the first term, stops at the 20th term. And our rule is 5n minus 3. Then S sub n of the series, the sum of the series, there's 20 terms. The first 20 terms add up to be 2 is the first term, 
And then what's the 20th term? 5 times 20, that's 100, minus 3, which is 97. So 2 plus 97 is 99. Whoop, can't write today. 99. And 20 divided by 2 is 10. So the sum of our arithmetic series is 990. Example 7 is a practical application. We want to know how many logs will be in a pile of timbered trees if there are 30 logs in the bottom layer. So that tells me our n is 30 and 29 in the second, and so on, until there's only one in the top layer. So I'm thinking that the sequence is 30, 29, 28, and so on, until we get down to one. So how many logs would be the sum of every layer, all 30 layers? 30 divided by two. The bottom layer is one. The top layer is 30. 30 divided by 2 is 15, and 15 times 31 is 465 logs in our pile if we start with 30, 30 logs on the bottom and then go up to 29 and then 28 and 27 and so on and so forth until we get up to 1. So this starts at 30 and ends with 1 at the top. And our very last lesson in the notes today is how to use a calculator to add up a summation notation this way. Here I'm showing you with my TI-84 calculator. And what I want to do is I want to hit the math button first. So the first step is to press the math key. And then you're going to arrow down until you find zero. And you see zero is the summation rule here. So we're going to press zero. And then what's going to happen is the symbol, the sigma, and a box, and an equal sign, and a box, and another box, and a box are going to pop up. And you're going to add your values into each one of those boxes so that you can say I'm going to put x equals 1, 6k minus, or 6x minus 3, I'm sorry, 6x minus 3, and a 12 up here, and it'll look like that, and then when you press enter, it'll add those numbers in your series, so you enter the information, and then you click the enter key. And by that, you'll add up the sum of the series for the first 12 terms. That's the end of Lesson 3.